Hello everyone, I am Rajdeep and you are watching Bitsket. So today in this video we will learn about CoApp, CoApp or Constraint Application Protocol. So what is CoApp? CoApp is a type of messaging protocol which is used in IoT or Internet of Things. So why do we need messaging protocol in IoT? Because messaging protocols play a vital role to send and receive the data or message to or from the cloud for any IoT application. The basics of IoT is collecting data and recording it to the cloud for analysis whenever required. Let me repeat again. The very foundation of IoT is collecting data from its environment and storing it or recording it to the cloud so that it can be analyzed later whenever it's required. So that is where the need of internet connection arises. Hence, IoT devices need to be connected to the environment which cannot be done easily and demands the necessity of various resources along with protocols. So these IoT devices need a protocol to work in a limited or constrained environment. For that, CoAP was designed by IETF. It is used to enable smart IoT devices to connect to internet. Similar to MQTT, CoAP is a lightweight protocol but uses lesser power as it is a connectionless protocol. It uses lesser resources even than HTTP, but CoAP should not be labeled as better than HTTP, as CoAP could be only a replacement to HTTP. HTTP is a highly favored and has no restriction, but constant application protocol has. CoAP is built to easily interface with HTTP by design for smooth integration with the web while at the same time being compatible with constrained devices and constrained networks. It is developed along with DTLS or Datagram Transport Layer Security for secure exchange of message in the transport layer. CoApp is a two-layered protocol as you can see in the screen. The lower layer is the message layer and the upper layer owns the request response process. CoAP uses two kinds of message, con message and non message. Con means confirmable message and non means non confirmable message. So let us first see con, then we will go to non. Okay. Let us assume this is the sender side and this is the receiver side. Now, if the sender sends a con message to the receiver side, then the receiver has to confirm that this particular con message has been successfully received by the receiver. So what will the receiver do? The receiver will send back an acknowledgement. Acknowledgement or ACK is a special type of message which is used to confirm that the previous message is being successfully received by the receiver side from the sender. All right. Now let us see what is non. Now in case of non as it is a non confirmable message. So the receiver side will not confirm that the message sent from the sender side to the receiver is being successfully received by the receiver or not. So when the sender is sending a non type message, then the receiver side will not confirm or, or not send any acknowledgement back to the sender side that this particular non message has been successfully received by the receiver. This is the difference between con and non in case of con. If a con message is being sent from the sender to receiver side, then the receiver will confirm that the con message is being successfully received. But in case of non message, the receiver will not confirm. Now, CoAP has three types of request response layer messages. The first one being the separate response. Second one, the piggyback technique. And the third one is non confirmable request response technique. So let us start with the first one, the separate response technique. Now in this case, we will again uh, understand this with the help of diagram. So let us assume uh, this is the client side denoting it with C and this is the server side. Don't confuse this with the sender. Okay. This is the client side and this is the server side. Now if a client sends a con message to the server, let us first send a con message asking for uh, suppose the temperature the room temperature i'm just writing in short then what will the server do the server will fetch the data and then send the data back to the client side 
Now the problem is the client has sent a con message or confirmable message. Now for a confirmable message, the say, uh, the uh, receiver side or the server side has to send back an acknowledgement back to the client that this particular con message has been successfully received by the server. So the server will first send back an acknowledgement or ACK message confirming that this particular con message asking for temperature has been successfully received by the server. After that, the server will fetch the data that is the room temperature and then send back another con type message with the data packet attached with the con message. Let us suppose that the data is 24 degrees Celsius. We are just assuming. Okay. Now the server has sent a con message. So the client has to again send an acknowledgement back to the server confirming that this particular con message has been successfully received by the client. So the client will again send an acknowledgement back to the server side confirming the, the successful receive of this con message. This is nothing but the separate response technique. Now let's proceed to piggyback technique. Now for that we need to revise the separate response technique first. Okay, the previous one. In the previous one, when the client side was uh, sending a con message asking for the temperature, the server side had to first send an acknowledgement back confirming the successful receive of the first con message. Then the server side would uh, send a con message with the data packet 24 degrees Celsius. And then as because this is a con message sent from the server side, so the client side had sent another acknowledgement back to the server side confirming the successful receive of this particular con message. Now for just one question and one answer, there were four transaction of messages. Now in order to minimize this piggyback technique is used. In case of piggybacking, when the client is sending a con message to the server side with the question or asking for a data that is the room temperature to the server, the server will fetch the data. Okay, the server will fetch the data that is the 24 degrees Celsius and send it attached with the acknowledgement. Okay, like this. The server will send back the uh, acknowledgement message with the data 24 degrees Celsius attached with the acknowledgement. Hence, by this technique, we are just minimizing the number of messages transferred between the client and server. Now comes the third one that is non-confirmable request response technique. Now you can see it is written already non-confirmable. So in this technique, uh, the transactions will be with non-type message or non-confirmable type of message. Okay. So if the client side is sending a non-message asking for again the same about the room temperature, then the server side will fetch the data and send back another non-message along with it the data packet. The server will not send any type of acknowledgement as this is a non-message. In case of non-message or non-confirmable message, the server side or the receiver side does not have to confirm the successful receive of this non-message. All right. So students, that's all for today. We hope you found this video helpful. If you have any further doubts, the comment section welcomes you. If you want to know more about our community, do check out our website. Link is in description. Do like, share and subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon.